We're going to talk about more transformations to exponential functions. <clears throat> Keep in mind we learned difference between growth and decay yesterday. So the first thing I want you to do is pause this video and just consider some of these possible scenarios here and kind of read through these questions. And then as we progress through the lesson, you'll kind of see how and how the graph shifts and why it shifts that way. So hopefully you took a second to think about some of those things. Again, sometimes, uh, you know, it's productive instead of doing practice problems from previous lesson is just to do some open-ended thinking and, and consider some possibilities of what could possibly happen for our outcomes when we do a little bit of manipulating to our, our functions that we know. So again, today our goals are going to be to apply translations to exponential functions, um, and then we'll use transformations of graphs to write equations, and we'll try and do both of those things kind of uh, quickly here in this video, and that'll give us more time to ask questions in class. So first of all, I want to consider the following. So if we have an exponential function, all of them can be written like this, and what we saw early on was our parent function and we called our parent growth function um, y equals 2 to the x power or f of x equals 2 to the x power. It doesn't necessarily matter. But when we consider our parent function, we have lots of implied values for all of the different things in this. So our implied a in our parent function is 1. Our implied h is 0. Our implied k is 0. And as we incorporate some of these things into our graphs, you'll see how they shift and manipulate your picture. Again, keep in mind, a lot of our answers are fractions that are very, very small. You're not going to control um, and be able to write them perfectly. But as we shift, it'll help us kind of determine where our asymptote is, where our domain is, where our range is, and kind of the general shape of our picture. Another thing to kind of point out is this A is always going to be the y-intercept. So whatever that value is, is going to tell me where I cross that y-axis. Same thing happens for our parent decay function. Again, when we had that parent decay function, we compared everything to the one-half power. Now, we'll obviously raise other values to a power, and it will look a little bit different, but we just refer to 2 as the parent because it's the smallest uh, again, the values for A, H, and K are the same. So as we go to change some of those values here in example one, we can consider what it might do to our graph. So if we look at what happens to our table of values in our parent function, so our original parent function, 2 to the negative 2 power was 1 over 4, and then 2 to the negative 1 power was 1 half, 2 to the 0 power is 1, 2 to the 1 power is 2, and 2 to the 2 power is 4. So this is our original parent function, and we have this in our notes. But this is what this looks like here. Again, we can go up to 8 for the next value if we need to. Okay, so our domain was all reals. Okay, our range, again, was boundaried by our horizontal asymptote. Our horizontal asymptote here was y equals 0. Okay, that's our parent function. But if I take my x values and I subtract 1 from them, so notice here, I'm supposed to take x minus 1. So if I do that, really what's happening is I'm going to take all of these values, negative 2 minus 1, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, and then I would reevaluate. So negative 3 would be 1 eighth, and then I would plug in negative 2, negative uh, 1, 0, and so on. But what's going to happen when I plug in negative 1 is it's simply going to shift all of my values to the right one. Okay, so if I plug in 0, for instance, 0 minus 1 is negative 1, and then I would shift that value over one half. So everything about my graph is exactly the same. It's just going to be shifted over one unit. So there's the only transformation that happens when you do the h value 
is that h shifts your function left or right, but it does the opposite of what it appears to say. So if it's a negative value, so if it says minus 1, for instance, minus is going to shift it right, plus is going to shift it left. Okay, so we can just take our original function, whatever the case is, and we can just say it's going to move it, our transformation or our translation is going to be right one. Now, something a little bit different happens when we change this value, and we saw this at the end of our other practice set. So if we take our same picture and our same parent graph, I can take this same parent graph from here, and this time what I'm changing is instead of changing my input, I'm changing my output. So I'm just adding 4 to all of these values. So it's 4 and 1 fourth. It's 4 and 1 half. It's 5. It's 6. It's 8. So this is where we shifted our asymptote. Instead of at 0, we shifted our asymptote. And then everything else about my function stayed the same. All of the values that I had before just shifted up 4. So my asymptote is now y equals 4, which means my range is y is greater than 4. My domain is still all reals. My translation was up 4. So the k value shifts up or down. Again, the k value, nicely enough, shifts up and down with what the sign is. Okay, and we've kind of seen this before in vertex form. If you want to take some time to try this one, and I will map this out and show you how this shifts in the, in the guided notes, but take some time, pause, and see if you can't maybe not necessarily find a table of values, but really focus on trying to find the translation and see if you can't draw kind of a rough sketch of what this would look like when I do these two operators to it. Okay, and then lastly, and this is something that we could easily talk about as we go into the notes because we've already discussed what A does. So this is kind of a combination of things. So these would be good practices for you guys to try independently and then go in and kind of see if you can put it all together. But that's essentially what the functions look like. So again, at the end of this video, consider what these control. And you can rewrite this down in your notes to kind of study. A controls a couple of specific things. H controls horizontal, K controls vertical, and kind of make a mental note of that so that as we describe translations in our notes, we know what we're talking about.